this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. This is part two of our discussion on changes in the human brain due to the Mandela effect. Today we're going to discuss the occipital lobe, parietal lobe, and frontal lobe. Okay, so let's get right down to it. The first thing I noticed here out of these three regions is that proportionally to the entire brain, the occipital lobe to me looks a lot smaller than it used to be. Now, the occipital lobe is involved with processing of visual information. Um, I was always taught that humans are visual animals, and evidence of that was the huge amount of the brain dedicated to visual processing. Like that uh, animals couldn't see color, they used to say. I know that's not really what they say anymore, but they used to say that we could uh, distinguish uh, patterns better than other animals. All these things were due to our huge region of our brain that was dedicated to visual processing. So now, comparatively, that region has shrunk quite a bit. All right, so the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe looks approximately the same size, although I remember it much further up. And the eyes are over here again, so this brain is facing that way. Um, so I remember the parietal lobe up here more because the occipital lobe took so much of the back region. Um, so the parietal lobe, let's see, that one is involved with uh, integrate sensory information among various modalities, including spatial sense and navigation. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's kind of basically it. It's just kind of a sensory in integrator. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a really easy to define definition beyond that. But that looks about the same for me. Um, so that would kind of indicate to, to from what I'm saying, that I remember the frontal lobe as being smaller. I'm, I'm not sure if it's actually grown, because if you look in the inside of the brain, there's a lot of region where it's kind of carved out and other structures are now in there. So um, although it looks larger on here proportionally, I think some it's been kind of undermined underneath. And size-wise, it may not actually be bigger, although it looks like it. Now, what does the frontal lobe do? The frontal lobe is kind of what makes you you is what they say it's more involved with personality um, let's go to the wiki the frontal lobe contains most of the dopamine sensitive neurons and the cerebral cortex associated with reward attention short-term memory tasks planning motivation dopamine tends to limit and select sensory information arriving from the thalamus and the forebrain so it's sort of like uh, Self-control, inhibition, um, decision-making is uh, more integrated in the frontal lobes. All right, damage to the frontal lobe. You will see personality changes, um, unwanted displays of emotion, inhibition, uh, just all kind of weird changes like that. Uh, this, the classic story of Phineas Gage, you've got a giant pole stuck through his head and how he went from a uh, law-abiding, respectable citizen to kind of a criminal and a nut um, because he had damage to his frontal lobe. So that's, that's kind of a classic story I remember from way back. Um, other things that they're, they're not talking a lot about in here, but uh, some of the classic problems with frontal lobe damage, problem-solving problems, um, loss of motor, of fine motor function, um, weakness in the limbs. Um, let's see, what was some of the other ones? Oh yeah, non-compliance with rules and risk-taking are also associated with damage to the frontal lobes. Um, but interestingly, they don't really cover a lot of that here. And what they do cover really kind of shocks me because I've never really seen this discussed much as an actual indication of frontal lobe damage. Um, and I, I think it's really suspicious that it's in here on this wiki. But they have a whole paragraph. I mean, they have one paragraph dedicated to everything else that can ever happen to you with the frontal lobe damage. And then they have a paragraph specifically for confabulation. Confabulation may be the most frequently indicated, less common effect. I mean, what does that even mean, the most frequently indicated, less common effect? And then they have less common in, in uh, quotes there. Uh, so what are they saying? Everybody has, lots and lots of people have frontal lobe damage and confabulation. I mean, is, is everybody 
got damaged frontal lobes here. I, that's kind of a really weird sentence. Okay, so in, in the case of confabulation, someone gives false information while maintaining the belief that it is the truth. He or she cannot remember the accurate information. In a small number of patients, uncharacteristic cheerfulness can be noted. This effect is seen mostly in patients with lesions to the right frontal portion of the brain. Okay, so basically they're kind of describing uh, the skeptic view of people who see the ME uh, as, as potentially frontal lobe damage. Uh, I, I'm assuming that most of us didn't all, all bonk our heads recently, so it's a little bit weird to be in here. Another infrequent effect is that of reduplicative paramnesia. Okay, first of all, never even heard of that. Um, it may have been out there, but it certainly wasn't anything that you would see commonly listed as a side effect of frontal lobe damage. Okay, now this one's just as creepy as the confabulation discussion. Reduplicative paranesia in which patients believe that the location in which they currently reside is a replica of one located somewhere else. Okay, so again, they're discussing that, basically the ME perspective. And then they go on to a third one. Similarly, those who experience cap grass syndrome after frontal lobe damage believe that an identical replacement has taken the identity of a close friend, relative, or other person and is posing as that person. This last effect is seen mostly in schizophrenic patients who also have neurological disorder of the frontal lobe. Okay, so basically they're just describing us in all of this. Um, I mean, I, I guess if we all had hit our head or something, this would make some sense, but I don't think it does. Otherwise, um, I think it's really weird that they're putting this all in here um, when it's supposedly not common side effects at all. I've never heard of it. I heard of Capgrass syndrome about mm, a couple years ago. I never heard of it in the literature before that. I never studied it. Uh, same thing with reduplicative paramnesia. Um, Actually, that term, I heard something about this general thing where you think you've been put in another place, but I did not, do not recall this terminology at all, actually. This is the first time I'm seeing this. So, I don't know, the whole thing is pretty weird how they're uh, almost seeming to make a very specific effort to describe the ME here. Um, I didn't really expect to find that when I was just going along looking up the frontal lobe information. But um, I have a lot more to cover. There's, there's so much to go here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll cover the temporal lobe. There's a whole bunch of, bunch of changes inside. Uh, there's some changes to the skull, uh, the fissures. I mean, there's just so much. And um, I will cover that in, in, in a couple more segments after this one. So for now, this is Eva signing off for Lunch Upon a Time.